Hello, I am Herb Coach, and I'm with the Chicago Land Lionel Railroad Club. And today we're going to take a look at Jim Simmons' layout, which includes a huge King Kong layout. Wow. <laughs> well, hello, Jim Simmons. I see you got King Kong on your shoulder. <laughs> this is a neat layout. What can you tell us about it? Hi, Herb. Uh, yeah, I'm Jim, and uh, uh, I'd like to uh, and just take you around and show you my layout. Uh, I began this layout in 2010 together with my son Brad Simmons. The grandkids were heavy into dinosaurs and me I'm a big fan of the classic old movies. So Brad and I hit upon the idea of a layout based on King Kong after the original 1933 RKO movie and our Skull Island layout was born. Soon others joined in to help us the size of the table was expanded. Today it's about 21 feet long and six and a half feet uh, wide on the narrow end and on the wide end something over nine feet. The now larger mountain became Skull Island Mountain with a skull face, a new cavern uh, for the tunnel uh, with details such as eerie lighting all protected behind plexiglass. My son-in-law Josh Jason, a mechanical engineer, built an arch bridge from balsa wood that's, that's based on the bridge at uh, Niagara Falls. My wife Diane helped with painting. When we had to move the layout, my friend Dave Esquivel was instrumental in dividing the table into six sections with surgical precision. After it was reassembled, I was busy with track and wiring, wiring, wiring. And then I created the middle loop. We call it track 93, which is a loop within a loop within a figure eight. The volcano was born, occupying one end of the figure eight. A full length mirror was installed on the wall behind the cave, which made it viewable from more angles. Brad patched up all the scars from the move and we began work of adding the dioramas that make Skull Island the work of art that it is today. Today's layout is sort of a King Kong Skull Island theme park. Similar to the concept of the original Westworld movie. Remember with Yul Brynner? Dates me. But the idea is that tourists can go and visit this theme park and experience the real experience of being on King Kong Skull Island. They ride through the exhibit in a special excursion train, passing through the various dioramas depicting scenes from the original King Kong movie. There's also a diorama, diorama honoring the discovery of Sue, the T-Rex on display at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. The layout is chock full of eye-catching features. The most attention-getting dioramas and features of the layout are the Skull Mountain exterior, Fay Ray's sacrifice altar, the native village, the erupting volcano, and the burning wreckage of a crashed airplane, and the engine house with a welder. Almost all of these are scratch built. So with that, I would like to show you Skull Island. Yeah, let's take a look at your layout. So I see that you have a trophy case here and you got the Chicago Land Lionel Railroad Club car in there. Very oh, nice. This is, yes, this is one of a few that I have, but I love this one and it's going to be in the case. And I see you got the mm -hmm. Santa Fe that we just uh, came out with. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's a nice case that you got there, Jim. Let's move on to the rest of the layout. Hey, Jim, I see that we got a nice height here. We have a nice elevated track. This is the start of your layout. The elevated track, uh, we call track 93 or just track 3. It is the, um, essentially the excursion train that visitors would ride to take them into the Skull Island theme park. Oh, is that neat. Mm -hmm. We should do that. Would you like to see it run? I would. Mm -hmm. Track 93. Passengers have just loaded at the station. And off we go. The caldera has the, has the cone down below. Again, the train is going around and down the face of the mountain, winding his way down. Now we're in the native village. So 
circling around through the native village, past the lake and the stream, past the monuments, around to the second loop of the three. And this one goes through what we call the little tunnel in the water. Coming out of the little tunnel, he comes up. This particular train has Odyssey, so he comes up the ramp without losing any speed. As we survey Kong's domain, here's the mighty Kong standing and over and looking down on his kingdom. Well, you King know what? Kong. He looks pretty hungry there, Jim. He's always hungry. He's a, he's a funny guy. Notice the trees that are near here, where he hangs out are barren of leaves because King Kong has stripped them clean. As we move to the left of Kong, we come across upon the site of the crashed World War II vintage fighter. It's on fire, uh, uh, burning from several points. Well, you know, those lights look really effective. What did you do to get at that uh, fire effect? We've hidden LEDs from Evan Designs, the fire effect LEDs. We carefully hid them inside the broken structure of the crashed plane. It really looks nice. And, and the cliff face at this point are all moldings that were done individually. I couldn't tell you how many moldings are in there. And you got a waterfall going here. A wonderful waterfall. It splits in two, and uh, this is a, a water effects, um, and it drops into a lake below, or actually a river or a, 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 a lake. Body below. of water a body down of water below. below. Yes. One of the things we like a lot of the vines that are there's a lot of vines that are on the mountain face. Oh, there we have a Tomb Raider scaling the mountain, hanging it on a rope. And he's going to go to Skull Face? He's going to up to the Skull Face, and oh, there's a native waiting for him in the Skull Face. I don't know that he's going to like the surprise he's about to get. And the Skull itself. Oh, that's a good view of Skull Face right there. Crafted by Brad uh, out of plaster. Very well done. Oh, LEDs light the way. The tomb. And the mossy uh, trees. Oh, it just shows the, the moss hanging from the trees and the moss growing on the face of the surfaces show that this tomb has been undisturbed for many, many years. As we continue east, we find the natives have captured Fay, and she is trapped and, and left as a sacrifice for King Kong to take away. This is from the 1933 movie. Fay Ray has been chained to the altar. It's the sacrificial altar. The natives would sacrifice regularly to King Kong and he would then be their protector from all of the animals and, and creatures that live in these forests in this jungle. Fay, in her white evening gown would have been a great, great temptation for the natives to give to King Kong. You know, I'm surprised they didn't give Fay Ray to the king of the native tribe. <laughs> she looks pretty I'm, good there. I'm surprised too. Fay was uh, the dress, uh, really just about an inch and a half in size. Uh, we had to create a rather realistic looking evening gown in white to match what Fay was wearing well, that in the movie. did a super good job. My wife Diane did that by fraying silk fabric. Super. Very creative. As we enter the village and take a look at the village, the highlight of the village is the, the hut that belongs to the king of the village. I, I see the king's hut is kind of a little bit taller also. It's taller, it's decorated, uh, it has, uh, it's actually surrounded by water. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And in order to gain access, you have to pass two guards. There's a guard here at the front of the, of the little bridge that goes across the water and a guard at the door to his hut. The king of the village is, is a bit of a recluse. We don't see him here, we see his guards. But we do see his ornate entrance way and the steps leading up to his bridge. And don't fall off the bridge, you might be impaled by 
the sharpened bamboo stakes that are sticking out of the water. And I like the way the huts are uh, with that uh, fiber type of material. Yes. What is that? All natural materials. Uh, the bamboo actually grows on my son Brad's patio in Los Angeles. Um, and the roof material? I'm not sure where he got this. I'd have to come back to you. That is secured though with uh, scenic cement. Those hut roofs really look nice. You, mm -hmm. you guys did a good job. So mm -hmm. now we got the water around and we got a whole bunch of little huts all the, part of the village. The rest of the villagers live outside of the water. We see some, a couple gathered around a fire here. Yeah, and again, again, those LEDs, designs, which are really nice. Fire LEDs, same that makes the tiki torches. And the, the various huts have various purposes. There are totems scattered around the village as well. They're very religious people. And then in order to give us the jungle look, there's a lot of all scratch built trees that create the look of the jungle. As well, well this as is really good. Now, foliage. you got much more train than just the jungle, right? Oh, yes. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff you have. Jim, we've been looking at this Pennsylvania Railroad maintenance shed for some time now. We got to take a look inside. Well, this is a real nice train shed that's over here. So uh, it's got, it can do engine repair. And it also has a fellow working on the track right now, Jim. Well, you know, probably when they had an engine in there before, maybe a steamer, there might have been a little something done damage-wise to the track, so our welder is making a repair. And I like that illusion that you have with that welder light. White lights are flashing to make sparks, and the blue light represents the acetylene torch. And you can see in the background there, there's a workbench uh, just to the left of the welder under the windows. Along, the, along that north wall there, under the windows, that is a shelving unit and a bench, and there's tools there, there's supplies there. That was scratch built by my son, Brad. He's talented. He is an artist. Okay, this is the powerhouse, and you can oh, see... Oh, so you got a pigeon up there, too. There's a pigeon That's up a there. That's a nice effect. <laughs> These uh, little lights are burning. A uh, couple of guys in there, one's tipping his hat to you. Pallets. And uh, there's an oil, oil tank. This is a large boiler that's creating energy to supply electricity to the entire island. This is our powerhouse. Here's, a, here's a, uh, some barrels. Over here, there's different elements that are going into the making of power. Yeah, all adding a nice ambience to the scene. And creating wonderful. Behind it is the um, the uh, yard, <clears throat> yard house, with a couple of guys. One guy's kind of taking a break. <laughs> Good for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the extra little station platform is for the crewmen, not for the public, but for the crewmen to use. We're going to get some of the big trains running now. We're starting with Fairbanks Morse Wabash Freighter. So Jim, it's always nice to have trains running. What a nice layout you have. Thank you, Her. There we are, three, three trains running. Always the more the merrier. Absolutely. That internal loop you have is really intricate and nice. I'm actually a little bit proud of that. That's a lot of track work to get that to come together.
here we got a tunnel going into a mountain. There we can see the inside of the mountain, and boy, is that cool. Nice colors going on here. So th this cave on the inside has special activities? Well, the lighting comes on as locomotives come through. It's activated by sound. Oh, you know, as we're talking, it's activated. Well, yeah, our voices are activating it, yes. Oh, and is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's be quiet for a moment, see if it turns off. Sound. Oh man, is that nice? Oh, the back of Skull Mountain. <laughs> and getting out of the tunnel again. You can see a super train's going. You know, I'm looking inside the volcano and it's got the lava already going. Oh, look, it's popping now. Look at that. Oh, wow. Jim, you really got a nice. That's the uh, that. that's the volcano. That just pops with uh, super yeah. smoke. Yeah. Now, what did you do to get that? To this work is like a that? Uh, this is a theater stage fog machine. So I uh, hit it again. Oh wow! A theater stage fog machine. There are LEDs inside the caldera. Yeah, and, I can see that. And so the uh, the idea is to light the fog as it's coming out. You know what, Jim? Mm. We got to turn the lights off in the whole room now. Yeah, we do. Jim's layout illuminated by the layout. Oh, I still love this caldera. <laughs> I make it go. <laughs> it's charged. Okay, let's go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Technical details. The track is Atlas 21st Century, three rail. Switches, Atlas and Ross custom switches. The layout is powered by three Lionel 180 watt powerhouse bricks, supplying legacy 180 watt power masters for each of the three loops. MTH bricks for the switches, lighting, and accessories. The control is Lionel Legacy and MTH DCS. Landscape is cast plaster, sculpt to mold, water effects, static grass, fine soft dirt, everything. Lighting is primarily Evan Designs LEDs with a heavy emphasis on Evan Designs fire LEDs. The buildings, uh, MTH engine house, Lionel and MTH station platforms. All other buildings are scratch built. Locomotives. I limit my modeling to late steam and early diesel era, basically roughly 1935 to 1955. I use MTH, primarily PS2 and PS3, Lionel, TMCC, and Legacy, K-Line and Williams, almost all of which have been upgraded to TMCC using ERR cruise commander cards. Rolling stock, well, you pretty much name it, but I have uh, Santa Fe, Pennsylvania Railroad, Burlington Route. I grew up next to the Burlington Route lines. Great Northern, my wife grew up next to the Great Northern lines in Montana. The Atlantic Coastline, because it's just beautiful, and Chessie as well, then B&O.